Hey there, Ebby here. Welcome back to the channel. Come, come, come. I want to talk to you about my newfound love for slide film. Let's go back. Slide film is one of those films that I've never really paid attention to, mostly because it's very, very expensive. Like looking at the prices for Ektachrome E100, like I understand why me in the past decided that I don't want to shoot this film stock. But back in March, before that, I shot maybe three or four, maybe five rolls in total in the three years of shooting film photography. But back in March of this year, I had a roll of Provio 100F in medium format laying around. I loaded that in my Pentax 6.7, shot that roll, dropped it off at the lab. When I got the results back, I'm like, <laughs> wait, what is this? This actually looks really good. I bought another roll, shot with it, waited for it to be developed and scanned, got the results back, and I'm like, you know what? I am 100% hooked. Ever since then, I've shot maybe 30 rolls of slide film in 35 medium format and even four by five film. That led me to make this video because I want to talk to you about my new found love for this format. In this video, I'm going to be giving you a brief history of slide film, talking to you about three reasons why I love shooting slide film and three things that you ought to know if you're going to be shooting slide film. And throughout the video, I'm going to be showing you some of the results that I've been able to get with shooting slides over the past couple of months. Let's dive right into this one. Now, sometimes when you hear people talk about slide film, they can use a couple of terms. Some people call it reversal film. Some people call it transparency film. And throughout this video, I may use those terms interchangeably, but they all mean the same thing. Slide film is a type of film available today that gives you positive image on a transparent film base. Unlike your color negative films or your black and white films that give you negative images, slide film gives you a positive image. So taking a look at these images here, you can see what the color negative and the black and white negative looks like versus uh, a slide positive image. For the color negative and the black and white uh, negative, you have to do a certain process to it, either through printing or through scanning or through other methods to get what we see. You have to give it negative negative in order to get a positive. But with slides, you have a positive image straight out of camera. The way I like to think about it is that you get on your positive film base what you see when you look through the camera if exposed properly. Now that we understand what slide film is, let's talk about a brief history of slide film. Now, did you know that slide film was the first commercially available film that we could buy at a store? Yes, Kodachrome was the first commercially available film. It was first available in 16 millimeter in 1935, and in 1936, it became available in 35 millimeter slides and also eight millimeter. Even though Kodak was the first to make slides available to be purchased in North America and around the world, there were other companies like Agfa and of course Fuji that did make slides available. And even though slide film was the first commercially available film, there were other films like color negative and black and white films that were available before slides were available, but they were only available for motion picture films. Over the years, there have been a number of very popular and available slide films. Kodak made a bunch of ectochromes in different formats, in different speeds, in different saturation levels. Fuji made a lot of different slides, Agfa, whatever company, everyone made slides. But in today's world, in today's market, if you went to the store and you wanted to buy slides, there aren't that many options available. Kodak still makes the Ektachrome E100, and depending on where you are in the world, you might be able to find Fuji Velvia 50, Velvia 100, and Provia 100. And that's about it when it comes to slide films that are available today. The reason why most of these film stocks are not available today is that it's very, very hard to make. The chemicals that they used to make them in the past have all been put on the various banned substance lists because they are not good for the environment. There also exists black and white slide films. Yes, black and white slides exist. Agfa used to make the Agfa Scala 200X, which you can still probably find on the black market, probably expired, not black market, but like eBay and Facebook marketplace. Uh, in today's world, you can still find the Adox Scala 50. 
you can still find the former pen R100 and also FVP super positive. Black and white slides use a different development process than the colors which uses E6, but we'll talk more about development later on in this video, so stay tuned. With a little bit of history now behind us, let's talk about three reasons why I love shooting slide film. The first reason being viewing options. When it comes to a color negative and black and white film, in today's world, you can mostly print black and white and scan them. Color negative, for the most part, you have to scan it and then do a conversion using whatever software you want to use. But with slides, there's different options. You can view it on a light table. You can hold it up to the sun, to the light and view it that way. You can project it, you can scan it. There's so many viewing options that you can do with this format and that's made me fall in love with it even more. I have a slide projector, I have a light table, I can hold it up to the light. It just allows me to do so many different things with the slides that I can't do with the other color negative or black and white images. The second thing is the colors. Now if exposed properly, you have beautiful, beautiful images. You have vivid colors, you have different sort of representations of colors and lights. If you're shooting on a sunny day, you get these really crunchy, high contrast images that you don't get on color negative or black and white images. Viewing the slides when you project them, you do get a different experience than when you scan them. In fact, when you're scanning your slide images, you're not doing it the best way it's supposed to be. The slides are meant to be projected. Scanning slides is actually very, very difficult as you do not get an accurate representation of what the slides actually look like. But when you project them onto a wall, onto a surface, you get what the slides were meant to be, the way they were meant to be viewed as. And that's made me fall in love with this format that much more. The third reason why I like slide film, and this one is might be a little controversial because a lot of people tend to struggle with this, is that it tests your limits as a photographer. When you're shooting slide film, you have to nail your exposure. You have to nail it. There's no in-between. If you go one stop over or one stop under, you're going to get completely different results. When you're shooting color negative or black and white, you can overexpose by two, three, four stops, and you'll still be able to pull that back. But when you're shooting slide film, depending on the type of slide that you're shooting, one stop overexpose, your highlights could be completely gone. One stop underexpose, your shadows, there's no saving them at all. Now, as a photographer who's been doing photos for 10 plus years, nailing exposure, especially on slide film, is something that I still struggle with today but it makes me really, really think about each shot before I take it. It makes me think about the lighting conditions that I'm shooting under. It makes me reframe my subjects, reframe my composition in a number of different ways because if you're shooting on a contrasty day, you're gonna have to pick. You're gonna have to pick. Do I wanna expose for the highlights or do I wanna expose for the shadows? Because if you're exposed for the highlights, your shadows are gonna be completely black. If you're exposed for the shadows, then your highlights are gonna be completely gone, right? For me, I feel like the best conditions to shoot slide film under is on a cloudy day because you get flat lighting and then you don't have to choose. But taking a look at some of these photos that I'm putting up here, you see what I'm talking about. And I do still love the results I'm able to get, but it just makes me think that little bit extra about what I'm shooting and why I'm shooting it. And it makes me think about my exposure that much more when I'm shooting with slide film. And I do love that because it makes me a better photographer. Now that we've spoken about three things I love about slide film, let me tell you about three things you ought to know if you're thinking about shooting slide film. The first thing being that slide film is expensive. <laughs> it is very, very expensive. Now, depending on where you are in the world, there may be available bulk loaded 35 millimeter ectochrome 100. But from what I'm hearing, Kodak is gonna be stopping that whole system coming soon. So if you're in different parts of the world, I would try to stock up on the bulk loaded E100, but regular E100 that you find in stores available from Kodak is usually, and here in Canada, it's above $40 a roll. If you're buying Provia or even Velvia 50, cause Velvia 100 is not available here in Canada. So Velvia 50 or Provia 100 for 35, it's about $35 per roll. For 120, it's about $30 a roll. Four by five, you're looking about $150 for about 25 or 20 sheets of Velvia or Provia. 
E100, the price goes up to about 150 to 200 in four by five. For a pro pack in E100, you're looking at about 100 to $150. So it is very, very expensive if you're thinking of shooting E100. It's, it's more expensive than shooting Portra 400 or Portra 800. So you do have to really think about it when you want to shoot it. The second thing is developing. Now you can develop at a lab and you can develop by yourself at home. When it comes to the developing at labs, most labs do not have E6 available in their labs. Some people take them in and then send them off to other people to do the E6 development, but some labs just don't offer it. Now you can buy a kit that you can develop at home. Uh, there used to be a Tatanol kit that you could get 16 rolls out of, but those kits are not available anymore. I do believe Tatanol went out of existence. They don't exist anymore. You can get the Cinestel kit and also a Unicolor kit. I personally prefer the Unicolor kit because you do get more out of that. These kits only give you eight rolls per batch, and it costs upwards of $75 for a box of one liter of development chemicals, which is crazy. That's about $10 a roll for development, plus 40, plus about 40 bucks for per roll. So that's about 50 bucks just to shoot one roll of slide film. Like that is still on the expensive side. And even when it comes to developing at a lab, some labs could give you, it could take upwards of one to two weeks to get your rolls back. So when it comes to developing slide film, it is expensive as well too, and it does take some time and it's a whole different process. Another reason why labs don't necessarily like to do it in their labs is that the chemistry doesn't last long. All right, some labs wait for a whole bunch of E6 or slide films to come in before they develop it, before they send it off, and that could take time. So that's just something you ought to know if you want to shoot slide film. The third thing is something that I've already touched upon already, but that's shooting expired slide film. For me, in my experience, when I've shot expired slide film, you get a better result when shooting it at box speed. Taking a look at some of these examples from shooting Astia 100 to Provia 100 to Velvia 50 to any of the ectochromes I've been able to get my hands on, shooting them at box speed, I've always got usable results that I can confidently tell you that you should shoot it at box speed as well. When it comes to buying expired film, you want to make sure that the film was stored properly make sure it was stored properly. Now, even if it was stored properly, you could still get some fogged film. But for me, the best that results I've gotten from expired slide films has come from the Fuji slides. The Kodak ones, depending on what year they expired, you may not get good results. So just keep that in mind if you're thinking of buying an expired slide film. Final thoughts on this is that slide film is beautiful. You can do a lot with it. It does cost a lot, but the results I feel give something different that you can't get with color negative or black and white. So if you're thinking about shooting slide film, go ahead, buy it, shoot with it, learn from your mistakes. Try to get your hands on some of those bulk loaded E100 before Kodak decides they don't want to sell it anymore. Make sure you do shoot some slide film. Let's talk about it. Follow me on threads as that's where I talk more about what I'm doing in between all these videos. Thank you so much for watching. If this video has brought you any value, please make sure you do the things, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel as this goes a very long way to making sure I produce more content like this. Until next time, make sure you stay safe, make sure you shoot film, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.